and welcome back to the second part of this tutorial okay now let's put some code together to get the whole system working so I'm going to just exit out and let's go straight into the coding area I actually need to import the following so I'm going to grab this because I need the database to function so I'm going to grab that just paste it underneath here then the next one I need is going to be the data and I'll say column column O L E D B. There we go. That's it. So I've just imported the database engine. I will take care of my database. Now, the next thing I'm going to do to be able to get the database active. So, first of all, let me do this. I'm going to go straight to where I have the database. I have the database here. That is it. It's called iStocks. And this is my project folder. I'm going to double click on the project folder just get it open and this is the database let's just right click copy and paste there we go let's right click on it copy and I'm going to paste it right inside my project area that is it right there okay that one is sorted so I can close this that is my project inside the projects I've uh, saved the database right in there. Copy and paste the database right in there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is those are the content I have on that database. And this database will be made available on my description area for you guys to, to have a look at. Or use it for whatever you want to use it for. So let's close that. And close this as well. And right underneath pragma and region here I'm going to first of all declare right underneath here let's declare the following that will make the database active so let's say OLEDB that will be connection OLEDB connection and I'm going to point to Con, that is the name of my OLDB, that's the name of my connection, and I'm going to then say garbage collector new. I would like you to collect OLDB connection. So grab hold of all of this, paste it right in there. Okay, but the thing is, I need to know the location of my database. let's just close that for now for me to be able to tell the location of my database save that I'm gonna come straight inside my design view here and let's go straight into the tools click on the tools and we need connect to database let's click on that and right here this dialog that pops up add connection make sure the connection you're using is microsoft access database file make sure that is in here then here click on browse to locate wherever your database is i'm going to drop this down and the database should be right inside the c plus plus folder here and there we go select you are rid of this admin and you can try test this out yes it's successfully connected so let's click on advance by clicking on an advance I just want to copy the location that is the location look at it let's copy all of that control C copy and I'm now going to paste that first of all let's just click on OK for this and let's go into my pragma area here you see right here where I have my database objects connection I'm going to paste what I've just copied in there okay we do have an error but that's no problem you see all the backspace you just need to make them double backspace double make that double as well let's make it all double and there the error is all gone 
so it's now indicating that the database is connected okay so have a good look at it take it from here and I'm going to drag it all right that is my that's the location for my own database okay yours might be easier yours might be directly right inside your C C drive okay then let's press enter now the next thing I want to just do is I'm going to say int checker that's one of the variables I intend to use now after that what I want I want to do is to create a function might as well just create a function right underneath here I'm going to say void data viewer enter the, the statement block and inside the data view I'm going to use try cache there and let's enter my cache statement right underneath here and the cache statement will be exception exception point to ex enter statement blocks okay in here so what I want to do is first of all just to display a message just for you to display a message box message box column column show as a show there double click on that show and in there you can just say ex dot point to message the message will be generated by the system uh, you can then enter whatever you want to enter in there so I'm just going to call that maybe as access connection or access connect access connect and comma let's ask you to display the following message box so message box buttons the column column okay there we go comma let's go to next line and message box icon column column let's make that information there we go and enter semicolon here okay that's my error message at the same time I will also like my database connector right here that's it right there I'm gonna close it so come in here let's see dot close all right that will be for the error message if there's any problem now inside the try I like you to try and open up the database so I'm going to start by saying my connector I want you to open open enter parenthesis and that is using the OLDB commands so let's say OLEDB command right here and let it point to OLDB command that's just said uh, instant created for it now I'm going to say con point to create command there can enter parenthesis there we go now we also want the command to tell us the command type so I'm going to say cmd that will be dot or point to command type the command type and the command type will be equals command type that we want to use that will be text column column text 
right now this very command type now we've told the system that the one we want to use is going to be text so we're going to say command type command text okay we say cmd dot command text and that is going to be equals to the following SQL statement let's say select all select all from I stocks that is the name of my database now we now want this very command we want it to execute dot execute non query that is the right there dot execute non query and enter parenthesis in there that is done we also need to get the data table so let's say data table and uh, we just want that to point to dt that represent data table and that is going to be equals garbage garbage collect new that is going to be o l e d b o l e d b and that will be data table no that will be data table enter parenthesis there we go now we now want the OLEDB data table adapter data adapter OL DB data adapter that will be here somewhere. Yep, and that is going to be pointing to let's say DP and DP that will be equals garbage collect new data adapter. And the, the collection that is being made is going to be from the CMD there okay we're getting somewhere so we now need this DP to fill up as follows DP dot fill DT DT the table data there and the DT that will be where we get the data onto our data grid view so I'm going to say the data grid view data grid view 1 data grid view 1 column no dot data source And the data source will be equals d t. Okay, so we can now close close the database, close that, and we also can now ask this data view function. Let's place that inside the form loop. Let's come back out here and double click on the form itself let's get hold of the form double click on the form you see right here where we have the form load my form underscore load I'm going to paste that in there end up with semicolon so which means when I run the system now it should upload whatever data I have inside the access table and display it on the data data grid view it should be displayed here so let's click on run I'm going to save that first click on run 
all right so let's check out the invoice area there we go see that guys let's actually open up the or uploaded all of the data on the data green view on the on the access database that's good so I'm going to exit out now so now that we know the database is working let's come right down here and take care of these easy ones before we start with the difficult ones you see here double click on exit for the exit I'm just going to enter let's say try try cash and I'm just going to grab hold of this cash statement paste it right underneath here get rid of the database here and here let's start by saying system that will be column column windows column column form column column dialog results and what do you want to call it I'm going to call it I exit and I'm now going to say I exit that will be equals as follows whatever you want to enter in there so I'm just going to copy this instead of reinventing the whole wheel copy that paste that right in front of that and my message in there is going to be confirm if you want to exit so let's come in here get rid of that and just enter confirm there confirm if you want to exit that is my message and I will now use the selection statement if I exit equals equals let's grab hold of all of these and now I'm going to end up with dialog result I'll say yes or no paste that in here let's say dot yes then application application column column exit and that should take care of my exit lines of code have a good look at it of course we can always just enter application exit but that is now good enough I want the system to prompt the user to confirm if they want to exit or not so if I click on run let's see what's going to happen and when you click on exit you see that confirm if you want to exit I need to change this to yes or no let's go back inside the code you see here where we have okay yeah that's fine this one should be yes or no right here yes or no that's it okay let's try it one more time and let's see how that's going to work there we go click on exit now we have our yes or no in there no I don't want to exit yes I do want to exit that's the advantage of you having to to be a little bit more professional with whatever you do prompt the user to confirm if they want to exit or not okay and we can also do the same thing for the clear function let's come in here you see where we have reset there's a reset button come right down here we need to say if we want to reset all of this so double click on that I'm going to paste that in here in this case it's all about reset confirm if you want to reset uh, we can just change it to I reset and this one will become I reset as well ok 
okay if it confirmed they want to reset then all of this should be cleared so let's start by getting hold of CMB there we go product ID I think dot selected index and the selected index that I want that to be zero okay so let's see maybe this equals zero all right that's the very first one then the next one is LBL product name dot text that will be equals clear copy this we just repeat that for the others then let's copy it again the next one is going to be LDL description paste clear okay guys I have to speed that up but I do have an error here look at it reminder that should have been reminder so when I come in here now I notice I was missing out the letter A which means I'm missing out the letter A here as well the original name so let's come in here and just get that sorted and this one as well let's give it the right name there we go alright so that is that for the reset double click on reset have a good look at the lines of code for reset we should bring this down as well the lines of code for reset have a look at it take it from try and all the way down okay there take it back up there we go all right that's fine so let's run our program and see how that's gonna work we might not be able to see the reset work for all the components but well, at least we can reset one or two things here I've already entered some stuff in here okay let's enter whatever in here click on reset no I don't want to reset yes I do want to reset okay so that is that for the reset if you're wondering one two and three four let me show you guys what happened in there so if I select the design view click in here and go straight to the properties inside the properties you see where we have item selection that is it I just enter that in there to speed up things and I repeated the same thing for this one discount click there just enter your discount in there and the same thing was repeated for VAT come in here I just enter yes no or whatever account type enter whatever you want to enter in there you can change it the choice is yours all right get rid of those click on ok and method of payment let's enter your method of payment in there cash visa card let's move it this card in here this debit card I'm gonna get rid of that because we have the debit card anyway click on that all right that is what I did with the combo box so if I run it now let's do one thing I'm gonna double click on this reset I want to copy the reset function name here and I'll paste that name on my form load so when the form load the system will automatically reset and get ready for the next action so paste that in there get rid of all of this system 
column column object and just get rid of all of this leave the object e in there and that's it make sure you enter your semicolon in there which means i've just called reset so if i click on run you see what's going to happen now there we go oh, i just called reset that is the disadvantage of that i'm going to say yes but check this out let's reset the whole system that would have been nice for the system to confirm if you want to reset or not but because i want to call it when the form load as well i have to make a decision but now you all know how to take take care of the reset to prompt the user to confirm if they want to reset or not so i'm going to comment all of this out if i comment it all out is to just call this alone so let's comment and get rid of this yeah all of these up to here there yeah that's fine okay the reset is commented out the so if i run it now the system should just reset automatically without prompting me prompting me to confirm if i want to reset or not so let's see how that's going to work there we go look at it automatically reset the whole system so i'm going to settle for this so you guys you've seen the two methods okay when you click on this you will see it without the reset as well so that is fine without the reset message so with that guys i'm going to call it the end of the second part of this tutorial and i'll see you guys shortly